Hey guys, my name is Master Fighter, and I'm here to show you how to install Arch Linux. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to archlinux.org, and we need to go to the download section. If you want to torrent it, you can, uh, or if you want to install it the regular old way, you can just go to the mirrors. Uh, if you don't live in one of these countries, there's a worldwide, but I live in the U.S., so I'm going to the U.S. section. My choice is usually kernel.org. Uh, when you're installing it, you want to make sure it's Arch Linux with the date on it because you want to make sure it's the up-to-date version. It's usually they make a new version the first of every month. I've already got it downloaded, so we need to burn it. Um, you can use Belina Etcher if you live uh, in the Windows ecosystem. Uh, you can use the portable one, or if you are on another Linux distribution, you can get it from your package manager. But uh, you'll select that image, and then you'll go to that you use your flash drive and then flash it. You just choose which one you want. Uh, since I'm doing it in a virtual machine, I'm going to not be using one of those. So once you've booted into it, um, you'll choose the first option. It'll usually automatically do it. Then we'll just uh, wait for it to boot. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna verify our boot mode. So we're going to type in ls slash sys slash firmware slash efi slash efi vars. And if you get any output whatsoever, that means that you are in the UEFI mode. That's the mode that you want to be in. Um, the next thing that we need to do is uh, we're going to ping archlinux.org. And the reason we're doing that is to make sure we have an internet connection. If you have ethernet, then you are connected to the internet. If you don't, uh, you can use IWCTL for Wi-Fi, and the way that you would do that is you type in station WLAN 0 connect, uh, not connect, uh, station WLAN 0 scan, and that'll scan for any networks. You choose the one you want to connect to, so say I have a network named network, it'll say passphrase, and you type in your password, click enter, and then you can click excerpt. And then you'll see them glorious 64-byte uh, packets coming your way. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to type in CF. Well, first we need to type in LS block so we can see our disk. We're going to type in CF disk dash Z dev VDA because that's our disk. Uh, we're going to type in, or we're going to hit GPT, and the first thing we're going to do is type in 512M, which will give us 512 megabytes. This is going to be our boot partition. If you want to make a swap partition, I'm going to. Um, do 4G. Uh, for instance, if you have 8 gigs, then you want to do 8 gigs. If you have 4 gigs, you want to do 4 gigs. Um, but that's up to you, though. And we're only working with 20 gigs here. You probably don't have a 20 gig drive. Your root partition ideally should be about 30 to 50 gigabytes. But since I don't have that much space, I'm just gonna do five gigs, which is still plenty. And then we'll do the rest for our home. And now what we need to do is we need to do, our boot system, uh, needs to be EFI. We'll make our swap partition Linux swap. Our root partition will be x86-64, and then we'll do Linux home. And after that, uh, we'll click right, click yes, quit. And then what we need to do now is we need to make our file systems. So let's check LS bulk to make sure everything's there. And we're going to do make fs.ext4 for dev VDA3. Do the same for dev VDA4. Dev VDA1, we're going to do fat capital F. 32 and then we're going to do make swap for dev vda2 and now we need to mount them so we're going to type in mount dev vda3 mount um, we're going to do mount dash dash make dir dev vda4 mount home hold on there's a typo do mount boot EFI for VDA1, and we're going to do swap on for our swap partition. And now we can go ahead and install 
So what we need to do is we need to do packstrap dash K mount. Now these right here are the bare minimum packages that you need to be able to install Arch Linux. But we are not doing a fully minimal install because a minimal install is nothing if you don't have the bootloader right here. If you don't have something to network with, which is network manager, if you don't have a text editor, which is that right here. And we do need some quality of life kits like poll kit. We should also use probably use Git. You probably aren't gonna need Git. I use Git because I have a GitHub and there's some programs that are better installed from Git, like DWM or a lot of other window managers, like the hackable window managers, because um, DWM, you gotta compile it from source every single time you make a change to it. So it's best to just install that from their Git. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video though. We're installing. So boom, we are installing. Almost finished. And now that we've installed, we need to generate our FS tab. So we do gen FS tab dash capital U slash mount to right facing Chevron slash mount slash Etsy slash FS tab. And then we can finally change our root directory. So we're going to type in arch dash root, then this slash mount. And then we need to set our time zone. So we're going to make a sim link from the zone info area. Now, so far you need to type in slash user slash share slash zone info. And um, you need to type in your continent. So say you live in America, you need to type in your time zone now. So say you live in Chicago or the Chicago time zone, uh, you'll type in that and it has to be capitalized. Now we do slash Etsy slash local time, and then we finish with that. Now we need to run hardware clock dash sys tohc. Now we need to edit the local gen file. So locale.gen. Then we're going to go down and find our locale, which mine is English US UTF 8. And then we run locale gen. Now we need to edit, uh, when, no, not edit, but create locale.conf. And we need to type in lang equals n underscore us dot ut f dash eight. And then we need to set our host name. So Etsy host name and just whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name it computer. And then we just set our root password, set a long and secure password. Uh, we can go ahead and add in our user, user add. I'm going to set in my name because my name is Sabian. Nice to meet you guys. Um, then we need to set the password for Sabian. Then we need to edit the sudoers file. We need to add our user. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to tell you about a certain thing. You need the base to vel if you're going to if you're going to install anything from the AUR or you're going to be building anything, then you need the base to vel package. There you go. And now we'll edit that. And we're going to add our user to the sudoers file. You can just copy, you know, that, but replace root. Because you don't want to be logged in as the root user all the time. That's not a good practice. You can uncomment one of these two if you want. I don't like to uncomment no password. It's uh, typically not best security practices, especially if somebody gets into your account. You know, you're, they're at your computer physically. 
but you know threat models and everything that doesn't really matter too much it's just that uh, you choose how you want to do that um next thing we need to do now is we need to actually install our bootloader so we've already installed grub we're going to do install grub install uh dash dash target equals x86 underscore 64 dash efi dash dash efi directory equals boot efi bootloader id equals grub in all caps doesn't have to be that and we're going to load up EFI boot MGR just to make sure, and it uh, seems like we're all good to go. So we can run grub make config dash o boot grub slash grub dot cfg, and um, we're almost ready to go. But since we're here, we can go ahead and make a, uh, do a couple things to make our life a little bit easier. Uh, we can type in systemctl enable dash dash now capital n network capital hold on capital m manager it's gonna it's that it's gonna tell you that but it's gonna go ahead and create the sim link they'll be ready to go this this doesn't have pid one we're truded into it but we'll be all good to go it'll be fine you know what i mean we'll be in there in just a minute so we'll type in exit and then we will reboot into our new Arch Linux install. And then there's our grub menu. We'll then type in, hold on, and I always forget to do this, but we'll go to home. Pseudo make dir. Sabian. And then we're going to go sudo shown dash r Sabian Sabian Sabian. Um and then there you go. That's your home directory if you exit and see we are now in our home directory. Though there's another way to do that. There's a bigger way to do that, actually. Um, you type in usually uh, M with a lowercase, and it will create the directory for you. But now, we're pretty much done. But there's one thing that we should do. There's a couple things, actually. Let me show you a couple quality of life things. Why don't I? Um, we'll go to pacman.conf. Now, this isn't even a quality of life thing. Now, this part, these are the quality of life parts. Let's do, oh, sorry about that. Uh, we need to do sudo etsy.pacman.conf. And the reason why is because you have to be the root user to edit a directory in the root directory. These are the quality of life things. We'll do color and parallel downloads. You can set as many as you want. I don't recommend more than five, really. This should be mandatory. I don't even know why they don't do this by default. You should uncomment the multi-lib uh, directory and then run sudo pacman dash capital S Y U and see it lets you see the multi-lib directory. Next thing we should do is we should edit our make uh, flag. So we'll go to Etsy make pkg.conf. We'll go down to make flags and you should set down however many cords you've got times two minus two. So say right now I've got, I think I've got four cores in this VM. I have four cores in this VM. So I'll have eight hyper-threaded cores, but we should reserve a core for running the system. So we'll do make flags J6. And that's pretty much, you're all ready to go. Um, look, you you can even check it, ping archlinux.org. It's all ready to go because we set up system CTL's uh, network manager. 
Um, but there's one more thing that we should do. And uh, we should install a Pac-Man wrapper. And the reason why is because there's a lot of good software that is only available in the AUR. And a lot of people don't know how to install AUR packages manually. They don't, they're not familiar with the Arch uh, build system. And technically, wrappers are not supported, but most people use them nowadays, and the community should be is typically more than willing to help you with uh, troubleshooting anything going wrong with them. Although rarely anything will fail to build. The only time something will fail to build usually is the package is like really, really out of date. So we need the CD and the slash opt. And the first thing that we need to do is type in sudo git clone https aur arch linux.org slash yay dot git. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to change ownership of that that folder. So we do sudo chon dash r sabian sabian uh, yay. And then we'll go into yay. And then we'll type in make package dot lowercase si. It'll install go real quick. Let's give it a moment. It'll let you install yay. And then we can run yay. Yay! Uh, and then that's pretty much all good to go. You've got a base system that you can go in any direction you want. There's no uh, really unnecessary packages. Network Manager is the preferred pa um, network manager for most people on Arch. Uh, though you do also have Conman and NetCTL. Um, I prefer Network Manager. It's just the most refined. But if you don't need all the features that it has, because it's got a lot of features, you can use those too. But if this video helped you install Arch Linux, if it helped you with what you need to know, then um, please like and subscribe. Tell me any criticisms you may have in the comments. Tell you know anything I'm, that you think I should know. Uh, and otherwise, y'all have a good day.